So, if that's the case, what is this planet doing? Revolving. Revolving, right. It's a good thing you didn't say rotating. What would rotating be? Spinning on its own axis. Spinning on its own axis. So it would be spinning like this. And then revolving is like this. And it only exists uh, in our planet and everywhere else it doesn't. Okay, so thumbs up if you agree that gravity is only unique to Earth. Thumbs down if you think it's not unique only to Earth. Gravity is actually the same on all planets across the solar system. It doesn't pick, on, pick and choose on what it acts on. It acts on everything. What is different is it varies in strength based on size and mass of the object. What is the difference between size and mass of an object? The size is the shape of the object. Or how, how big it is. large it is. How big it is? Okay, and what is mass? If I said you have mass, what does that mean? Uh, it's your... Matter. How much matter you have. Very good. In our demo that Ms. Claire did earlier, what does the string represent in our demo? Force. Force. And which force did it represent? Gravity. gravity. Very good. Another scientist that also studied gravity is Newton. And what is Newton famous for? His laws of motion. Very good. Newton's laws of motion. Today we're going to be using a simulation on our computers to understand gravity on the planet. I want everybody to get out their computers and we're going to start the simulation. So now that we've all played around on the simulation, let's talk about some things we noticed. What about the path that our planets took? What shape was it in? Circle. Circle. So it's actually important to note that the path that the planet takes is not in the shape of a circle. It oh, is cool. actually in the shape of an ellipsis. And Ms. Clara is going to draw it on the board for us. Remember, it's not a circle, it's an ellipsis. So that's what you think, that's what it was on the simulation. This is what it actually is. Okay, so the bottom line is what your planet actually travels on. It's called an ellipsis. And we'll discuss it a little further after we do our simulation worksheet. <coughs> um, is it possible to change time, the time it takes for one object to orbit another in a simulation? Yes. Yes, very good. So I want you to pay special attention to that as, you can, as we do our worksheet. Okay, you're going to have 20 minutes to complete your worksheet with the simulation. So what are some of the things you noticed about the simulation? What, we talked about this earlier, but what path did the Earth take around the sun? An ellipse. In an ellipse, right? And so I want you all to talk in your groups for about 10 seconds and come up with a definition for the word orbit. Okay, Andrea, what did you come up with? A path the planet takes okay. around another object. Right, so orbit is a path 
that something takes around another object. Good job. So what does the moon orbit around? The earth. And what does the earth orbit around? The, the sun. sun. Very good. So we know that the earth is constantly orbiting the sun, right? And the moon is constantly orbiting the earth. But actually, the moon is getting farther and farther away from earth every year by about 3.8 centimeters. And 3.8 centimeters is about this much. And so every year, it's about this much right here, from here to the edge of the ruler. And so every year, the moon goes farther away from the earth. And what happens is that the pull from earth is strong enough to keep it in it on its orbit, but just slightly off balance. So that so that's why that happens. So what does that tell you about gravity? We talked about it earlier. It's everywhere. It's everywhere, right? So if the moon is constantly in orbit around the Earth, and the Earth is constantly orbiting the sun, what keeps it in that orbit? Gravity. Gravity. You guys don't sound so sure. So in our little demonstration, you told me that the string is Gravity. force, right? And so what's keeping it in orbit? The Gravity. force. The force of gravity, right? Of gravity. Good job, guys. <laughs> So actually, there's a gravitational force between any two objects. There's a gravitational force between me and all of you. It's going to be so, so small so we don't feel it against each other, but it's always there. So can you guys name something that you have a gravitational pull towards? This table. This table. Good job. Anyone else? My partner. Your partner. Right. So what did you guys notice about the size of the gravity force arrows? They were the same. They were the same size. For both the Earth orbiting the Sun and the Moon orbiting the Earth. So what does that tell you? The gravity is the same. constant. The forces are balanced, right? They have the same pull on each other. But what did I tell you earlier? That the moon is slightly, has a slightly bigger pull and that's why it's moving farther and farther away every year by a slight margin. So scientists have a definition of gravity, but I want you guys to come up with one. You have 30 seconds and then we'll come back and talk about it. Ready, go. How would you define gravity based on your observations? A pull. A pull, does anyone have anything else? A pulling force between objects. Good, so actually it's a force between two, between things. So that's what gravity is. Misconception is that it's a push. It is not a push, it is a force. How did you guys change the time it took for Earth to orbit the sun? We changed the radius between the Earth and the sun. Right, you change the size of the orbit. And so it didn't have to go as far, and so that's why it took a shorter time. So earlier we talked about size and mass. So what's the difference between size and mass? Size is the shape of an object. Mass is how much matter an object has. Size is how big an object is, and mass is how much matter an object has. So I have these two objects a golf ball and a balloon, which one has a bigger size? The balloon. The balloon. And which one has more mass? The golf ball. The golf ball, right, because it has more matter. So if the mass of either object increases between two objects that have a gravitational pull between each other, what happens to the force of gravity? It increases. It increases. So if mass increases, then gravity increases. What happens if we decrease?
increase the mass of a planet or the sun, say in that situation? Then the force of gravity decreases. Right, the force of gravity decreases. What happens to the force of gravity if distance increases? So we take the Earth further from the sun. Do you think the gravitational pull is bigger or smaller? Smaller. Right, the force of gravity decreases. So that brings us back to our question of the day, which was, how does gravity affect the motion of the planets? So I'm going to give you 30 seconds and we'll come back and talk about it. Edward, what did your group come up with? Gravity affects the motion of the planets by determining how fast they move. Okay, so if an object is further away, is gravity increased or decreased? Decreases. And if it's closer to the other object, it? Increases. Good job. So what are some advantages of our simulation that we did today? We can see the whole solar system. Right, we can see the planets that we wouldn't be able to see normally. What are some disadvantages? It's not an accurate representation of the way the planets actually work. Right, we have to keep in mind that it's not completely accurate. And so it's just a model so we can learn about gravity and it affects and how it affects the planets. During our activity today, we discovered that different planets have different, different gravitational pulls. What does that tell you about our weight on our planet? It's not the same everywhere else. What do you mean by that? Like my weight might be different in Mars? Very good. So how much we weigh on this planet may not mean that we'll weigh that much on, like Andrea said, Mars. Um, so earlier we discussed the difference between size and mass. Let's discuss the difference between mass and weight. What is the difference between those two? Mass is how much matter you have, and weight is how much matter you have times the force of gravity. Very good. So that's why our weight on different planets would depend on the gravitational pull of that planet. So today, we're also going to figure out how much weight would vary on different planets. This worksheet that we're going to work on, it has different conversion factors for each planet. Um, let's do one together really fast. Let's take Jupiter. Why do you think Jupiter's conversion factor is 2.5 times greater than that of Earth? Because it's so much larger. So the size is bigger. What about the mass? Do you think mass is greater? Yes. So what happens when mass increases? What happens, what happens to the gravitational force? The force of gravity increases. Very good. So now we're going to pass out this worksheet. I want you to pick two planets that you're choosing to do it, and then we'll talk about it in the 